this is huge regardless mm-hmm. of which which sector of the society it impacts it is huge yeah um i mean i'm by no means an expert on every sphere of the industry um but it's it's going to be it's going to be like a great filtering i feel um for good and for bad um there's just most most artists who are trying to create content um a kind of struggling one way or another it's it's very rare that you have somebody who just have tons of time and tons of money and like doesn't have deadlines um even the studios who do have tons of money they have very strict deadlines um so obviously you know everything just being suspended in mid air means that when we go back to work um let's say a feature film let's say it only has five five actors as the lead so it's a s- small project right those five actors it would have probably taken producers like a year to two years to to secure funding to secure distribution and sales and it really depends on you know certain named actors playing those roles to get that funding now let's say Reese Witherspoon was meant to be filming March and April for something that somebody got funding for the last 2 years so she's now not doing that well she's booked to be filming something else in August so it kind of means that film is like well what do we do and I, I don't know what they're going to do i mean i suspect some actors will get a lucky opportunity where they wouldn't have before because they desperately need to cast somebody for that role um so that might be a nice little shift you know maybe like a, a b or c list actor will get a role that they weren't expecting to to be able to play um however it also means that that certain projects the funding's just going to get cut because they're like well you promised us Reese Witherspoon now we don't have Reese Witherspoon that's it out um so unfortunately a few companies will probably go into liquidation and go bankrupt i'm sure they'll start up again and they'll be fine but they've been working for this for a while so to have things fall flat like that will be very upsetting um the real kind of indie indie filmmakers who never really had that much funding to begin with um i suspect they're going to be turning all their budget towards you know paying rent and paying loans and doing all of that so they probably won't be able to make their projects right now or or like for the rest of the year just because you know it's not like you have an infinite supply of money so that's going to affect people um the studios i suspect because there's just been all this content that's being watched and rewatched so there's going to be a deficit of content so i'm hoping a lot of my friends who are writers directors producers actors will suddenly you know get tons of work because the studios are going to be like oh my god there's this great black hole we need to fill let's film as many projects as we can so i'm hoping that's going to happen and kind of like balance things out for people um there's like going to be it's really kind and of, and also kind of an explosion of uh need and demand i mean literally yeah. in the past the past few years the amount of content created has it's been i mean enormous so mm-hmm. to keep up with that i think the creators the writers and screenplay writers all of them uh will have to work even more i think yes. after this yes so so i'm hoping very much so that that the people living in LA which is you know a city that makes a lot of content um i'm hoping that we're all going to see a lot of work and a lot of bookings um i i do worry for people who were just about to film because i think it's thrown a, a giant spanner in their works and i suspect there'll be a lot of a lot of bad news for people but but generally i mean the one thing that is being used right now is is grocery delivery and content so we're kind of in a good place to be creators because people are going to want more of what we do i think it also gives a, gives us i mean regardless of whether you are in filmmaking whether you are in um like uh writing literature or uh painting art or science even regardless of that yeah. i mean this also gives us a uh, a crisis gives us the opportunity to practice our creativity I mean we yes. have to think outside the box we have to think outside the circle that we have we have been used to for centuries even I mean I was I was looking at uh, people actually have already started taking uh, photographs through uh FaceTime even and creating mm-hmm. music videos through Zoom I mean what the <laughs> heck is happening it's a kind of a new kind of content that's coming to life Yeah so 
so yes since it is a crisis and we have we it's a kind of it, it's in a such a great scale that we have never experienced it before ever ever before not yeah. at such a great scale uh so yes it is scary but uh, at the same time the opportunities are also right there in front of our very eyes i mean mm. people are thinking outside the box even uh, think about filmmaking even i mean uh, this also makes forces studios perhaps studios will have to be focusing on even graphics more i mean they would think about mm. how to make the movies make the content without visiting so many places or without visiting so many locations so yeah. they can do that all of that with the computer graphics right now and they would be using it even more mm. yeah and then there is and uh, and then there we have uh deep fake which mm. is a kind of making people just but again there comes the policy this there comes the legality that you have to get people's permission to even yeah. use their their avatar this crisis uh yes makes us scared but it also yes. uh, it all it also forces us to use every single tool at mm-hmm. our disposal in this current context in this context of quarantine like we have to do our work i mean people will still have to keep on working some way, one way or another i mean not everybody can afford to keep on staying at home with hard work people have to keep on working so the work continues so they have to think about uh using every single tool that we have available at our disposal whether it is technology or any kind of new creative idea anything mhm yeah and i mean there's certainly been a, a huge shift to people being a lot more self sufficient and independent in just the amount of technology that's available to use at home so most actors will have a little self tape studio corner you know it won't be up and ready but it probably takes them 10 minutes to set up um whereas 10 years ago you know they had to go to a studio to record stuff so people already have uh, editing equipment people have a uh, basic recording equipment for even recording audio for like um audio books and things like that so people have things they can be doing already in their home they don't have to go out and buy equipment so yeah this is definitely going to push people to to <laughs> to get even better at it Yes I mean, I mean um as for filmmaking yes uh, and in in case of music people have been already using it i mean uh, uh the artists the composers they already have a mini studio at home where they can compose music and uh, many of the musicians that have already been doing like youtube live at their home studio mm-hmm. so this also makes us think i mean what what we could do in a crisis we all we would all think that uh, at a crisis that everything ends but it, mm. it doesn't end it's a new beginning uh, it's a new beginning and perhaps in most cases it's a better beginning yeah i mean as long as there's power and internet <laughs> yeah. i feel like we can do this if if the internet shuts like say like all of la had like a internet power cut for a few days things would be very different i mean yeah we really need to have that connection to be able to do to be able to collaborate to be able to receive scripts you know to do all of that but as long as there's those things there's a lot creators can get busy with yeah i wonder a lot you know i i wonder how long the lockdown will carry on in california um i wonder how it's going to affect the the rest of the year i was i was thinking today for example you know how here everything tends to uh, in terms of making stuff and casting everything kind of tends to shut down on thanksgiving and then it doesn't really get going till like mid january so there's kind of always like a bit of a quiet period so i'm suspecting this year we're going to be working all the way through just because there's going to be so much to catch up on um so there's not going to be that that little break that you kind of get around the holidays um so i think like you know enjoy this time to do whatever it is you need to do to to feel relaxed to feel replenished to feel healthy to feel like ready to go because in many ways um as an artist i feel like i'm i'm preparing for like a really big marathon like i need to be ready in every single way my energy needs to be on full or my stuff needs to be ready to go like i feel like it's going to be a really long a long year once we get going i don't think there's going to be time to breathe which is great um 
but yeah, I was just kind of thinking, I was thinking like everything's going to change. Nothing's going to be the same for a while. So this has, this has changed us as a species, as a, mm -hmm. as a kind has changed us. I mean, yeah. oh, we have had thought that we have to think about others as well, not just ourselves. I mean, uh, so far, most of humanity have been uh, self-obsessed. Us, yes. us, us, just me, me, and me. And mm -hmm. this thing, and Mother Nature just said, okay, me, 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 so let's just see how powerful you are. And it just mm -hmm. shut down, down. So literally yeah. brought the whole world to a standstill. So yes, hopefully this will make us think. This will uh, make us understand ourselves better and take better decisions in life as well. I mean, thinking about the for example, the very cause of the pandemic, the origin. It happened mm. because, because we uh, in China, regardless of who, it's just all of us in this together. So we cannot just say, we cannot just say that they did it. So it's us. I mean, whatever yeah. they are, they are us. So we are yeah. all of us this as one. So yes, we did it. And we started eating like consuming wildlife and that's how it spread from wildlife to us it was just a ticking time bomb it was oh yeah happen. oh yeah i'm amazed it hasn't happened before on this level i know it's happened several times in a smaller level but it's amazing that we've been able to get away with it for as long as we have because it's yeah. so biology so easy like that you know it can just turn around and bite you <laughs> Uh, it, it has happened before and it didn't happen at a such a large scale because of uh, the travel. I mean, before mm -hmm. when it happened, the world was not so much connected as it is today internationally. Mm -hmm. So before that, there was not so much international travel, not so many flights. So it was uh, contained at a small scale. But today, the whole world is connected internationally every single minute. And that's how it spread so fast. And literally in a, but still we, we need to give credit to science, to medical science because yeah. of, because of recognizing and understanding the virus so fast. I mean, mm. compared to the previous times, because of all the advancements we have made, we have actually understood it much faster. And that saved a lot of lives. If it had happened better, people would have died at a much larger scale so today yeah. we have science and we recognize it in a matter so uh, china it started in december and mm. the chinese uh, scientists released the so there is the th thing like every organism has a genetic code in it okay mm -hmm. so this virus has a genetic code in it, a genetic sequence in it so because of all the advancements that we did China was able, uh, the scientists were able to release the genetic sequence of the virus to the world. And that helped us a lot to recognize it, to screen it, to test people whether they have the virus or not. And then again, now we are working on a vaccine. The vaccine is not going to happen uh, soon enough. So we will be, we are people, the scientists are already doctors, already trying out treatments. So in case of in case of treatments, we have like, other than vaccine, vaccine is, it doesn't treat diseases. So it prevents diseases. Mm -hmm. So it cannot be used on people who are already sick. Yeah. So who are already sick, for them, we have two ways, two methods. One is to use antibodies, which means the body's ability to fight a virus. So mm -hmm. another is repurpose drugs, that is, uh, those drugs that have already been used in other diseases that are already used in other conditions. Mm. For example, chloroquine is uh, currently popular right now, even though there is not much medical data that it actually has any kind of positive effect, not substantial data that it has positive effect on COVID-19. So it is being tested as well. Then there is antibody, which is those people who have recovered from the virus, from the disease. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we take the plasma from their blood and they mm -hmm. have this, they have the fighting capacity. They have these antibodies that can fight the disease because their body has already recovered from it. 
Mm. I was wondering why why that didn't happen like three months ago. Why we can't just suck it out and give it to people. <laughs> uh, no, actually, because you see, uh, in case of medicine, it's not actually magic. We have to. We cannot. <laughs> we. I mean, people are always think about medicine as if okay, uh, there is this cure, or there is this vaccine, or there is this pill. So just because there is this pill, they assume that it can cure things, it can treat things. So be, to make it safe, we have to go through testing. You have to mm. test it enough. But even compared to a vaccine, these antibodies taking out the capacity from the recovered people and injecting it to, it has already actually started. Several hospitals have already, FDA has already approved it for several right. hospitals and we're already trying it in several uh, places. And currently it is showing uh, promising results in people right. so it's especially people who are in critical condition mm -hmm. so this is this is what we call compassionate use so the F fda approves a treatment for those people uh, where there is no hope so there is no other thing so what have you got to lose so let's just try it so they have the fd has approved it and right. various scientists across the world are trying it out and we are seeing promising results. So yes, the antibody treatment, the plasma, it is called convalescent plasma therapy. So we right. take out the plasma and put it in the people. And people are recovering faster than usual. They are recovering from critical condition faster wow. than usual. Okay. okay. So this is this is much more promising than the vaccine itself. And so let's just hope for the best. I mean Doctors and scientists all over the world are, are working at it full throttle how to deal with it. And, but we also have to make sure that uh, it is safe, that it doesn't have any kind of side effect, it doesn't cause any yeah. other disease. Yeah. That is the right. whole point of it. Developing a vaccine is no big deal. Uh, it mm. takes a little bit of time. Uh, and it takes from, let's just say, a few months at most to develop the vaccine at most but developing a vaccine doesn't mean that the vaccine actually works yeah. so that's that's where i mean you would be seeing the news all over that um okay this company has the vaccine so people naturally have the tendency to assume okay now everything is going to be cured and everything but just because there is a vaccine doesn't mean it does work it has to yeah. go through an animal testing first then it has to go to human testing at a small scale and then several thousand people. So these from smaller groups to larger groups, going through that several phases, if still we have positive results, so then we can like uh, release it to the public all over the world, but we mm -hmm. have to be sure. So it takes time, the vaccine. So until then, our own responsibility towards ourselves, towards our society is the one thing that will cure us, that will stop the spread. I mean, the doctors and the scientists are doing their best to find a treatment, to treat those who are critically ill. But other than that, it's not just the responsibility of those health workers. The responsibility also lies on us as well, each one of us, every single person. So, I mean, you would have seen that people are just going around still, the youngsters and teenagers on spring break, and they're just yeah. enjoying Yes. As if it's just their life. I mean, they're saying, okay, if I get it, I get it. So what? But the point is, it's not just your life. I mean, you may get it and you are healthy. So in many cases, more than 60% of cases, people are actually not aware that they have the virus. So really? It's called, it's called asymptomatic. So which mm. means those who are infected, more than 60% people won't even know. They won't have mm. any symptoms or they will have very mild symptoms. So how will they know? But they can still spread. It yeah. spreads to a person, older person uh, who has pre-existing medical conditions. So they can get sick. They can go to mm. intensive care and at a critical condition and some of them will die. So these reckless people will be responsible for the death of these people. So that's what we need to prevent with each one of us. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that a lot of people have had trouble understanding i think because they just really think it's on them and it's like no it's so much bigger than you and then uh i know there are some people who have opinions 
um, and it's true that you know financially a, a lot of people are gonna you know a lot of a lot of small businesses that aren't chains they're gonna close down forever they just they just can't you know it's those 30 it's that 30 grand that it's just they just don't have maybe they're already in a little bit of business debt um, I know there's some some places in LA like on the high street that are going to be shutting down like a couple of uh, boutique diners and like you know just the little people kind of thing um, and so they're like oh well this is going to ruin more lives you know than just people getting sick and dying this is going to ruin you know families businesses it's going to ruin everything and it's like yeah well what can we do you know it's not just one person we have to all look after each other and protect each other yes so it's the responsibility of all of us. I mean, and the best thing is that's that's what I've been saying for these past few weeks. It's not just about stay. I mean, we have to stay home. That's the only yeah. way to stop the spread. But at the same time, if you can afford it, if you are in a position to help, to help as many people as you can, either personally yeah. or through relief funds, because not everybody can afford to go through this. Yeah. Because if we do not help, only the privileged will get out of this alive. What happens yeah. to the rest? We have yeah. to take care of all of them. We have to take yeah. care of all of us, each other. Yeah.